This video is sponsored by Zippin. Hey, I'm Scott, and today we've just got a straightforward tutorial for you to get set up in filming with the new 600 and 800 versions of the Zeppin Micro 2 slider. I'll put up a timeline for this video because there is a lot to cover, and we'll break this into a few parts, starting off with just a quick introduction to this slider in general and talking about what you will get in the kit. Then we'll jump into how their new support-based system works. After that, we'll get it on a tripod and check out their new support arms, which are meant to help support the weight when your camera is out at one end of the slider so that way it doesn't have that flex because it is only mounted in the center. And finally, we'll show you how to attach the motor if you buy it separately. We'll take a quick look at the basic function and how to use it. So let's get into it. First off, the Micro 2 from Zeppin now comes in three sizes. The smallest right here, which is 30 centimeters, not including the motor, is super portable, but we're gonna get it out of the way and talk about the others for now. And then we've got the newest two editions, the 600 and the 800 next to me here, which are 64 and 94 centimeters, respectively. Sliders mount underneath in the center and because of their design, when you unlock them, they actually travel twice the distance of the physical slider itself. So you can get quite a lot of travel even from a relatively compact slider. Here are a few more specs for each of the three models like their payload, the estimated battery life, the total travel distance and things like that. Now, as you may or may not be able to actually see on the video, these sliders have a kind of fluid damping mechanism built in, similar to the fluid resistance you get on a video tripod head, and it helps a lot to take out those final little imperfections in your actual movement, especially if you're using the manual version. Because of that design and very different from other simple sliders, with these it is incredibly easy to get not only smooth but consistent movement even just using them manually and in less time with less takes and less frustration. Now the new 600 and 800 versions come in both an M for manual version and E for electronic version, but of course you can buy the motor separately if you go for the M version at first. They both come with these really nice soft carry cases which you probably can't see behind me, so let's get one of those on the table and show you what you should expect when you open it up. So when you open up this main section here, you get the slider together with the base already attached and it's a good fit. It fits perfectly for the size of whatever slider you get, excuse me, as this all falls out. And again, this is the 600M, this is the manual version, so it fits perfectly in here. But if you get the motorized version, the electronic version, I should say, then it will come with a case that's an appropriate size to fit that as well. Otherwise, you've got your instruction booklet, which is very detailed, and you've got a little bag with some extras like a 3 8 inch screw thread adapter, your warranty card, in a little tool. Now on the front of the bag, you've got this little extra pocket to store those support arms that we talked about, which is a great way to get an even more solid setup on a single tripod. We'll talk about how these work, uh, their pros and cons and everything like that in just a minute, but they are stored in here. They have enough space to fit in easily and there's an extra little pocket for little odds and ends if you wanna store maybe a tripod plate or something in there, you've got space for that as well. And that's about it. So let's take a look at this brand new support base on the bottom here. The original support base for the smallest Micro 2 is just that, a support base with legs. But the newer 600 and 800 versions come with a totally redesigned base that has a lot more functionality. First off in the bottom here, you have the center base plate with multiple screw threads in there, 3 8 and quarter inch screw threads, which is great. Plus the center block actually works as a quick release plate itself. It should be compatible with most Manfrotto style heads. If you do want to put a different style quick release plate on here though, having multiple screw threads will be great so that way you can use more than one screw and avoid this spinning loose. You've now also got multiple screw threads at each end of the slider if you want to attach even more accessories, magic arms, things like that. On the bottom you've got these four fold out legs which then fold down to support this on flat ground or a table like I'm doing right now. 
These little feet can now do even more than just that though, because if you fold them under, you've got these little wheels, which means you can put this onto a table and slide it around, getting even more dynamic motion. You can position the legs out straight to go side to side, although that pretty much is the same movement as the slider itself. You can position them straight at a 90 degree angle from the slider, so as you slide back and forth, you can push this forward or pull it back away from your subject, again getting even more dynamic movement. You could of course put them both at some different angle to get a curved motion, uh, again with or without the actual slider moving by itself. You can also then completely unscrew these little feet here to reveal a male quarter inch screw thread, which you could then screw into these amazing little suction cups, which are also made by Zeppin. And you could put this onto a wall, depending on the type of surface, or a window or something else to get an even more unique point of view. Of course, this table is flat, but you could see that if it was not, you could even use these suction cups to hold the slider in place on some sort of inclined surface. Now these suction cups can each individually hold 45 kilograms, so with four of them, you can really use this without worrying whatsoever. It's a very cool little extra that could be fun and could get you some unique extra angles. This is dirty. Spider webs everywhere. All right, it's nice and clean. So you just get these suction cups on the surface and then you can pump them until they are tight. And you have this little blue stripe on here. And once you can't see that blue stripe anymore, it should be securely on there. So we'll go ahead and do that with all four of these. And again, keep in mind that any one of these should be able to hold 45 kilograms. So, well, it's pretty nerve wracking, even just with the slider itself, not even a camera on there. This should be incredibly secure here. And go get a ball head, put it on here, and we'll put a camera on there. All right, so let's put our ball head on there. God, those bugs are loud. So I'm gonna trust this with a pretty heavy camera setup. I mean, this is a brand new, uh, almost $2,000 lens, the 135 uh, f1.8 lens that I got, and the a7r Mark IV. This is not the best shot in the world. This lens doesn't work. I'm gonna change my lens. All right, uh, let's see what we got here. Nothing special in terms of footage, but... Nothing special, but this is a shot that I couldn't get. Um, this is too narrow here for me to put a tripod up here, so it would be a pain in the butt. Um, but just, you know, I can suction cup that to the window, Boom, done. No tripod, no problem. You've got your car. Ignore this one, it's on a curved part here. But even so, with three of these, it's boom, rock solid, and boom, you've got your surface to put your slider onto. And of course, you could face this towards the car as well. If you have people sitting inside and you wanna do some kind of sitting and talking scene, you've got your surface right here. You can put this on the window of the car, on the hood of the car, on the back of the car, on the top of the car, and it's rock solid. Just a quick note here, you do have these pinch locks which will help you hold this in place, especially useful on the manual version when you're not using the slider. Uh, but if you have the electronic version, you don't need to touch those at all. However, if you do find your slider to be stuck, make sure that you check that those are off. And if you're having trouble unclicking them, just wiggle this around a little bit to the left or the right, and that should help to unpinch them. So now back to the base of the slider. If you look at it from the front, you can see that there are actually these wheels under the track, and there's also some thumb screws on the end to loosen those up. And if you loosen that, you can see that these wheels are kind of spring-loaded up against the track. So you will want to use those to kind of calibrate the slider once you've got all your weight, all your setup on top of here. To do that, like I said, just loosen these up and the wheels will automatically spring up against the bottom of the track. Tighten them down again and again. And this is after you've already got the weight on your camera on here. And now, once you slide this out to one side or the other, you can see that the wheels will help to support the track away from the center, just again, to avoid any sag at one end or the other. Now finally, you've got these little female sockets under here which are for those support arms that we talked about. So let's go ahead and get this on a tripod and get those arms set up and talk about those a bit. Now when you've got these sliders on a tripod and you've got the camera all the way out at one end or the other, it's going to be putting quite a lot of torque on your actual tripod head, especially if you have anything larger than even a very small camera on there. So Zeppin have now included these support arms which can help to take the stress off of your actual tripod head as well as help to support 
the slider itself at either end so you don't have too much of that sag effect as it goes to one side or the other like you do see with most designs that only mount in the center. Now these are not perfect and they do present their own difficulties and frustrations. For example, if you're trying to go quickly from one shot to the next, like when you're shooting B-roll for a YouTube video, these can be a little bit frustrating because they take a lot of time to adjust each and every shot. I also like sometimes just panning my entire video head while I'm sliding uh, back and forth because at the moment there is no pan motor available and that's the best way to get that kind of parallax type effect. In each of these cases, the 600 size or even the original Micro 2 might be a better fit for you. But when you want longer travel distance for interviews or for time lapses or something like that, these arms make this setup really rock solid and it's kind of the best way to do it and I would still strongly prefer this method than having to carry two separate light stands or tripods with me as well as the slider as well as my cameras to set up a slider that has connections on either end. Carrying the slider in the case, a single tripod and my camera backpack is going to be a much more uh, reasonable setup when I'm going out on location. Okay, anyway, this is not meant to be a review so let's actually take a look at how these work. Basically, you've got these three arms which are connected with these little ball heads and clamps in the middle and each section is telescoping so you can make adjustments for your particular setup. So I've found it easiest to first loosen everything on these arms and take these balls and snap them into the socket underneath the slider just like that. And for now, we'll leave that loose. And then you're going to want to find where these clamps attach to your tripod legs. It's gonna kind of go through the center of your tripod and you're gonna find where it attaches depending on your setup. Then clamp down those clamps on your legs, first of all. Before tightening any of this up, make sure that you've got your slider in the position and the angle and everything that you want it. And then we'll go through and tighten these all tight in the sockets underneath, tighten these arms themselves, and tighten the ball heads that are connecting each of the three arms. If you want to change up your position or your angle of your slider, anything like that, you're gonna to have to loosen everything up once again, except maybe the clamps which holding onto the legs change your position, and then go through and tighten everything down once again. And this is the main reason why I said moving quickly from one shot to the next, like shooting B-roll, can be a little bit of a hassle when you're using these support arms. If you want to use the slider at some more extreme angles, you can still use these support arms. It's a little bit trickier, and you're gonna have to, again, remove these clamps to get this set up from the start, but you probably only need to attach one of these support arms usually on the bottom, and it's probably easiest to bring it over from the opposite side. So uh, I'll remove this side as well for now, just so that way we have a little bit more freedom in this setup. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this arm and I'm gonna snap it into the socket on the bottom side of this slider, and then just find out where this clamp can fit onto my tripod legs. So with the arm snapped into the bottom of my slider, this is how the clamp fits best onto my tripod leg. So now that the clamp is tightened down, we're gonna go ahead and tighten down this ball head. We'll tighten down the actual arms extension and also the socket on the bottom of the slider. And now we should have a solid setup even at this more extreme angle. So again, while it's a little bit complex, these arms do work great to support the slider for longer motions like motion time-lapse or interviews where you've got that looped motion. But both of those are situations where it works best with the motor attached. So let's go ahead and take a look at how to get that attached and how it works. So the motors for the original Micro 2, the 600 and the 800 will each be a little bit different. They're not the same motors, but in the box you'll get pretty much the same stuff. You've got a very hefty and detailed and multilingual instruction manual here. You've got a little screwdriver. You've got your USB cable. You've got some extra little accessories for attaching the track and some more. And these are actually the ones that we're going to be using. You probably can't see them too well through the plastic bag at the moment. You've got some thumb screws to hold the motor onto the track of the Micro 2 itself. And if you get this with the motor already attached, the E version, the electronic version, just check these thumb screws. When you take it out of the box for the first time, make sure they're tightened up so nothing is wiggling loose. And then you've got the motor itself, and this is what it looks like. It has a track already attached, and this is the one that we're gonna put on there today. So basically, you've got everything that you could possibly need, including the actual tool, except you do not get the time-lapse cable that will depend on your specific camera. And of course, you don't get a battery with this, but it just takes standard Sony L-series batteries. So what we're gonna do is basically just remove one half of this track, slide the motor on, and then replace it with this track that's already installed in the motor. To do that, we're gonna need to replace some little adapters with these that comes with the motor. And let's take a look at, in detail, how to do that right now. So the first thing is to unlock your slider because we're going to need to move this to one side or the other. I'm gonna move it to this side and I'm gonna remove the track on the right side myself. 
So once you move it to the side, you can now look in and you can see right in the center here, there's a screw holding the track on on either side. So what we're gonna do is use the screwdriver that's provided and remove the track or remove the screw that's holding the track for now on the right side, only on one side. Okay, so you can probably see now more clearly, this is the screw that we removed and this was the piece which was holding this track onto the actual center of the slider. So if you're not sure what it looks like, this is what came out and this is what we're gonna be removing. But as you can see, it's still attached on this side here. So we're gonna flip this over and do the same from the underside of the slider. If you slide this all the way out to this side and slide the center part all the way over to the end, it's a little bit easier to get at now. And now we've fully removed that half of the track. Now once you've gotten to this point, you'll see how this works a lot more clearly, but you've got these pieces here, which will then attach where we just removed that track. And the ends of these, you can see are female screw threads. So that's where the male screw threads of the track built into the motor will connect to. So first off, let's go ahead and attach these underneath and then on the top, exactly where we just removed that track from. So now you can see we've got one attached right there and we've got one attached on the top. Now we're just gonna slip this right onto the end of the slider and just keep in mind to keep these tracks uh, above and under it as they should be. You might have to move this around a bit to reach with the track that's attached to the motor. As you can see, if I have it too far over here, this just doesn't reach. If I bring it closer, now it can reach easier. So first attach one and then attach the other just by putting it in here and spinning this female screw thread to get it nice and tight. All right, and now the motor is just a little bit shaky, so we're gonna take these thumb screws and put them right in the sides to tighten this down so that way the motor itself stays uh, securely onto the slider. Last but not least, the most satisfying part. Okay, so now let's just take a quick look at how the motor actually works. So on one side, you've got your battery plate here and we'll just slide in a battery, for example, the Sony MPF550 battery right here. On the opposite side here, we've got the power button. Just hold that down for a few seconds and it will turn on. You can see those three lights and that is the speed. So three lights here, of course, is the highest speed, which you can see right here. It's gonna be your highest speed. Press that button once more. It'll go down to one, which is your slowest speed. Then of course, press it once more and two lights will be your medium speed. Again, just from what's built into the motor itself. With the mobile app, you can customize that speed even more. So if you want to see how that all works, I will put a link in the video description for my walkthrough of that app. Now the power button does have some other functionality, but we'll come back to that in just a minute. Up top, you have some very simple arrow buttons, which obviously move the slider from side to side like you would expect. If you want to program A and B points first, just move the slider to where you want your first point to be. Then you're gonna double tap that power button. You can hear beep to confirm it. Move to where you want your second point to be. Double tap again. Now you can hear that's your second point. It beeps two times. Now just double tap the power button again and it will move from point A to point B or point B to point A. And again, you can keep going with that back and forth uh, just by double tapping the power button. If you want your movement to be looped, so from B to A and back to B and back to A and back to B continuously, then just push down either one of the arrow buttons and then tap that power button and it will start and continue moving until you once again hold the arrow button down and tap that power button to stop it. Now when you have an A and B point set, pushing these arrow buttons will not do anything. So to cancel that A and B point, just hold down both of them at the same time. That means it's canceled and you can once again move it freely. Now, I think that's quite a lot of functionality for just a few physical buttons, but once again, once you connect to the app, you have even more in-depth control as well as time-lapse control, so be sure to check out that video. And so that's pretty much all there is to it. And these sliders are wonderful tools. Once again, this is not a review, but if you want my personal advice on which one to choose, I would say that the original is still probably the best for simple B-roll shots because of its size. The 600 is great for B-roll, but can also use that longer path if you need it for interviews or time lapses. And the 800 is going to be great if those interviews and time lapses with longer paths are going to be your main use for the slider. Also keep in mind that while there is only that side to side motor module at the moment, more modules are coming like a pan and tilt motor. So the 600 and 800 will be even more useful for those parallax type movements, which are absolutely wonderful and simple ways to make your footage 
especially interviews, look even more professional. Also, as I mentioned, I do have a walkthrough video for that mobile app, which will show you most of what you'll need to get going. And I will link that in the video description if you want to check it out. So for now, if you have any further questions about either one of these sliders, or of course the original, let me know down below and I will do my best to get back to you. Otherwise, like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff, and see you next time.